set on launch control, T minus two hours, 40 minutes, 40 seconds, and counting. At this time, the prime crew for Apollo 11 has boarded the high speed elevator from inside the A level in the mobile launcher, which is the second level inside the launcher. This is a high speed elevator, 600 feet per minute, which will carry them to the 320 foot level, uh, the spacecraft level. Uh, shortly, uh, we'll expect astronauts Neil Armstrong and Michael Collins to come across swing arm nine, the Apollo access arm, and proceed to the white room and uh, stand by to board the spacecraft. The third member of the crew, astronaut Edwin Aldrin, who will be the last one to board the spacecraft, will stand by in the elevator, seated in a chair, while his two comrades first board the spacecraft. Once uh, Armstrong, who sits in the left-hand seat, and Collins, who will sit in the right-hand seat uh, during liftoff, are aboard, then Aldrin will be called, and he will uh, take his seat, the middle seat, in the spacecraft. The spacecraft commander, Neil Armstrong, and the command module pilot, Michael Collins, now proceeding across the swing arm into the small white room that attaches at the spacecraft uh, level. In the meantime, about 100 feet below, we have a technician, a uh, team of technicians working on a leaking valve, which is a part of the ground support equipment, a part of the system that's used to replenish the fuel supply for the third stage of the Saturn V rocket. He is uh, proceeding to tighten a series of bolts around this valve in the hope that this will correct the leak. Once the technicians do depart, the uh, uh, hydrogen will again be flowed through the system to assure that the leak has been corrected. The uh, spacecraft commander, Neil Armstrong, and CMP, the command module pilot, Mike Collins, now standing by in the white room. T-minus two hours, 38 minutes, 45 seconds and counting. This is launch control. Apollo set on launch control. T-minus two hours, 34 minutes, 44 seconds and counting. The spacecraft commander, Neil Armstrong, now aboard the Apollo 11 spacecraft at the 320-foot level at the pad. We had it logged, uh, having the commander go over the sill into the cabin at 6.54 a.m. Eastern Daylight. Since that time, uh, the commander has now been uh, tied into the system and has checked in over the communication lines. He was wished a good morning by the spacecraft test conductor, Skip Chauvin, and Armstrong, in return, said it looks like a good morning. In the meantime, 120 feet below him, the technicians continuing to work to tighten bolts around a leaking valve uh, associated with the system that replenishes hydrogen fuel for the third stage. To repeat once again, this is not a problem on the launch vehicle itself, but on the ground support equipment associated with it. T-minus two hours, 33 minutes, 45 seconds and counting. This is Kennedy Launch Control. This is Apollo Saturn Launch Control. T-minus two hours, 30 minutes, 55 seconds and counting. Right on the hour, the uh, command module pilot, astronaut Michael Collins, who will be sitting on the right-hand side of the spacecraft during the liftoff, uh, boarded the spacecraft. We had it logged at 7 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time. The third member of the crew, astronaut Buzz Aldrin, standing by in the elevator uh, around the corner along the swing arm uh, from the white room and the spacecraft at the 320-foot level. 120 feet below, technicians still working on some bolts that surround a leaking valve that is associated with a system that replenishes the hydrogen fuel supply for the third stage of the Saturn V rocket. Our countdown proceeding at this time, coming up toward the two minute and thirty minute mark, thirty second, the two hour and thirty minute mark in the count. This is Kennedy Launch Control. This is Apollo Saturn Launch Control, T minus two hours, twenty three minutes, forty six seconds, and counting. The third member of the Apollo 11 Prime crew now aboard the spacecraft. We had it logged at 7.07 .07 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time when astronaut Buzz Aldrin boarded the spacecraft. He will sit in the middle seat uh, during liftoff. As lunar module pilot, his normal position uh, would be on the right-hand side. However, due to crew preference, uh, we have uh, the commander, of course, Neil Armstrong, sitting on the left-hand side, the lunar module pilot, 
for the overall flight, Buzz Aldrin sitting in the middle seat, and the command module pilot, Mike Collins, uh, sitting in the right-hand seat at liftoff. Down below at the 200-foot level, our technicians still hard at work tightening bolts around uh, a valve associated with the system that replenishes the hydrogen fuel for the third stage of the Saturn V launch vehicle. This is ground support equipment located on the tower at the pad at the 200-foot level. He continues to work at the 200-foot level as the crew in the white room uh, does the same with the three astronauts aboard. We actually have a fourth astronaut still aboard the spacecraft at this time, astronaut Fred Hayes, who is the backup command module pilot. He is in the lower equipment bay of the spacecraft, giving a helping hand to the three prime crewmen as they uh, start to perform some of their preliminary checks here as we uh, head down over the final uh, two hours, uh, two and a half hours of the countdown. We're at T-minus two hours, 22 minutes, 11 seconds and counting. This is Kennedy Launch Control. This is Apollo Saturn Launch Control. We've just passed the two hour, 21 minute mark in our countdown, and we are proceeding at this time. At the 320 foot level, all three astronauts now aboard the spacecraft. Just a few minutes ago, astronaut Buzz Aldrin came in and took the center seat to join uh, Neil Armstrong on the left and Mike Collins on the right. These are the positions they will fly at liftoff. Uh, during the process of getting the astronauts checked into the spacecraft, communication cables must be attached to their suits. They also have to hook into the suit circuit system of the spacecraft that brings oxygen into their suits. They are helped by a fourth astronaut on board, the backup command module pilot, astronaut Fred Hayes, is in the lower equipment bay, and one of the suit technicians who's located behind them to give a hand as they check in. We've heard from Neil Armstrong, and now we've also heard from Mike Collins on comm checks, and we're standing by for further reports as the checkout continues. 120 feet down, the work continues on a leaky valve at the 200-foot level. Uh, this is ground support equipment. The technicians still hard at work tightening bolts around that valve at this time. Two hours, 19 minutes, 45 seconds and counting. This is Kennedy Launch Control. This is Apollo Saturn Launch Control, T-minus two hours, 10 minutes, 35 seconds, and counting. At the 320-foot level, the fourth astronaut aboard the spacecraft regretfully leaves at this time. Astronaut Fred Hayes is about to come out after giving the three prime crewmen a hand in their preliminary checkouts aboard. Fred Hayes will be coming out shortly. In the meantime, 120 feet below, where we had that problem with a leaky valve, the technicians have completed their work, and they are in the process now of departing from the launch pad. In a short while, we'll start flowing hydrogen again back uh, through the general replenishing system to, to uh, continue to top off the supply of the hydrogen fuel in the third stage of the Saturn V launch vehicle. The spacecraft commander, Neil Armstrong, has completed a series of checks uh, called the board advisory system checks. This is where certain key crewmen on the ground, members of the launch team, can uh, send signals uh, to the spacecraft commander in the spacecraft, c light cues that would indicate uh, difficulty during the flight in which he could take abort action if he uh, de determined that such action was necessary. These checks have been completed, and Neil Armstrong confirmed that the lights came on in the console in front of him, the panel in front of him, as uh, these lights were uh, operated from the ground here in the launch control center. All still going well with our count. Uh, we will stand by as we uh, again uh, bring hydrogen back to the third stage. You will see how that operates. We're now at T minus two hours, nine minutes, four seconds and counting. And this is Kennedy Launch Control. This is Apollo Saturn Launch Control, T-minus two hours, seven minutes and counting. At this time, we're just in the process of closing the hatch on the Apollo 11 spacecraft. Uh, several of the closeout crew shook hands with the astronauts and then proceeded to close the hatch on direction from the spacecraft test conductor, Skip Chauvin. We had it logged as the hatch being closed and tightened, uh, still being tightened right at this time, which is 25 minutes past the hour. Once the hatch is closed, uh, we will start a cabin purge to condition uh, the cabin inside. 
The three astronauts, of course, are on pure oxygen in their spacesuits on the suit circuit. We will uh, produce a cabin atmosphere in the spacecraft of a 60-40 combination, 60% oxygen and 40% nitrogen. This is the atmosphere used uh, for liftoff. Once that is accomplished, the closeout crew will be ready to put the boost protective cover uh, on the hatch and continue with their closeout. The hatch uh, being closed at this time, we are proceeding. We'll stand by to see uh, uh, how our hydrogen condition is as far as replenishing the hydrogen fuel supply with the third stage of the Saturn V. Two hours, five minutes, 50 seconds and counting. This is Kennedy Launch Control.